hour. We're going to check in with Al in just a moment, but first, NBC's George Solis in hard-hit Asheville, North Carolina, with the very latest. George, good morning. Savannah, good morning. The death toll at 90 here in the region, and sadly, that number is expected to go up. Some neighborhoods, the water is slow to recede. It's taken hours and days for some of that water to disappear here. We are in the River Arts District that this time yesterday was completely submerged. You can actually take a look at some of the damage here left behind. Some of the power lines snapped like twigs, really giving you an indication of just how strong this water was. But make no mistake, there are still pockets of neighborhoods here that are completely underwater. Search and rescue teams still trying to find people in some of this murky, murky mess. Officials here are finally weighing in and saying, we have some cell service restored, but there's still no definitive timeline on when crucial services like water will be restored, which is really adding to concern and frustration to residents here who are worried that the federal presence here is not on the ground already. Buncombe County officials are also weighing in now saying the situation, while slow to improve, is starting to look to be heading in the right direction. But still, there is a lot of fear, a lot of concern, and a lot of people that are presumed missing. Buncombe County officials weighing in this morning. Here's what they told us. Right now, our biggest concerns are getting food and water to people. We have very limited phone service. The, the towers are starting to come back on. We did put a temporary tower downtown for folks to get some phone access. We have 30 um, confirmed fatalities at this time, and we expect that to really um, increase over the coming days, which is just the most tragic uh, piece of this is the loss of our friends, our families, and our loved ones. And we're from the White House. We know President Biden is Absolutely. expected to visit Helene-impacted areas as long as it doesn't impede with search and rescue missions. Communities here banding together in this crisis that is slow to improve. Savannah? All right, George Solis in Asheville for us. Thank you. Al's back. He's got a closer look at that destructive path and also more stuff brewing in the tropics. That's right, guys. And unfortunately, there's still runoff coming into those rivers there, so they're not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the leftover remnants of Helene still causing problems. And in fact, there's still some rain and heavier rain and showers in northern Virginia, and that's going to add to the runoff there. Some places may pick up another inch to inch and a half of rain, and the tropics very active. We've got this one area, Tropical Depression 12, that'll become Kirk, a major hurricane, but it'll stay out into the ocean. What we are worried about is this region here. This is the area to watch, a 50% chance of development. Right now, models aren't agreeing on when and how soon it's going to form, probably sometime late this week, early next week. We're not trying to scare anybody, but we just want to let you know this is something that we're watching very closely. Guys, all right, I will come back to you in just a few moments. Meanwhile, a shelter-in-place advisory was extended in Rockdale County, Georgia this morning after a fire and chemical release erupted at a biolab plant. This is east of Atlanta. Thousands of residents in the city of Conyers had to be evacuated. The presence of chlorine has been confirmed by the EPA. No word this morning, though, on when the evacuation orders or the shelter-in-place will be lifted there. The SpaceX capsule that is scheduled to bring home two stranded astronauts arrived at the International Space Station yesterday. The two astronauts on board came with two empty seats in this <coughs> capsule so that in February, when they return to Earth, they can bring home Boeing Starliner astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams. They were initially expected to return to Earth in June, but Starliner suffered helium leaks and problems with some of its thrusters. So after numerous delays, NASA opted to keep those two astronauts in space at the space station until February. All right, guys, you ready for a yes. little morning yes. boost? I got you. This is all right, let's go forward. Kate's take on season 50 kickoff at Earl's. really sad when people don't pay attention to other people such as myself and Al Gore and other people pertaining to what's going on with our global environment and it and we consistently see the damages that the planet 
it's putting out signals that obviously we are the too stupid not to realize or just don't care. Well, then whenever we see a major catastrophe like recently is going on in about five different states, it's only then and then we start to think about it, but we really don't. It's really very short-lived because we go on about our lives and thinking, well, we're invincible and we can continue on the same path that we're on, not realizing that we really didn't fully either understand or get the get the full grasp of the lesson that was supposed to be taught us over the last catastrophe. Stop. Back up. I mean, after it barreled into Florida's Big Bend, parts of North Carolina devastated. I mean, <coughs> decimated by floods and mudslides that have le left communities cut off. Some of them just wiped off the map. Dozens have been killed. Thousands still unaccounted for in what the governor there is calling an unprecedented tragedy. Oh. NBC's George Felice joins us live from Nashville, George. Uh, I mean, this is heartbreaking with everything you we're seeing there. Yeah, good morning, Al. The death toll now at 90, and tragically, that number is expected to go up. <coughs> we are here in the River Arts District. This whole area, up until a few hours ago even, was completely submerged. There were 400 businesses here, all of them wiped out. We've actually been seeing some people, some of the owners here, going into some of the galleries here to assess the damage. The emotional toll, obviously, on seen on their faces there as they begin to assess some of this damage. So many in this community are calling this Asheville's Katrina, just given the level of devastation here. I mean, you can really see, again, some of these cars that were just toppled here by that fast-moving water here by the river that just crept up so, so fast. And the frustration is also going by what appears to be the lack of federal response here, and no real timeline on when those critical services like water will be turned back on this morning the devastating effects of hurricane helene reaching far and wide as residents come face to face with destruction and a tragic reality i don't know if we can rebuild or, or be able to come back from this after the storm swept into the southeast last week floodwaters downing bridges and submerging entire towns like chimney rock north carolina now destroyed and as cleanup begins, large swaths of communities, like here in Asheville, North Carolina, still underwater. From above the city, heartbreaking views. Some areas still unreachable by water, slow to recede. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, there were there were buildings fully submerged. My mother lives in a nursing home. We tried to get there today. You just can't. Some people kayaking to safety. We were there when water rescues got underway. The storm also devastating Florida's Gulf Coast. The dangerous surge flooding homes and city streets. Helene's 100 plus mile an hour winds ripping out floors as locals begin the long road to rebuilding. Yeah, it, it's hard. We're not going to wait a month or two. Throughout the south and beyond, cars that survived the storm. The line's moving very slow. At a standstill, waiting for hours to fill up at the pump. While in North Carolina, many roads are impassable, making rescues even more difficult. And meaning the true scope of the damage and loss is still unknown. What Mother Nature can do and the damage is just, it's incredible. And this morning, President Biden is expected to address the devastation left over after Helene. He's also expected to visit this area here as long as it doesn't impede search and rescue missions that are ongoing. The one good bright spot in all is, if, if you will, this community has banded together in this crisis that has been slow to resolve. Oh. Al Craig, Chanel, Dylan. All right, George, thank you so much. I heard from a number of folks down south over the week. My parents were among the, the millions who didn't have power for a few days. Uh -huh. A lot of friends and family in North Carolina, especially western North Carolina. Yes. 
devastated. Yeah, it's yeah. difficult. Well, to well, overstate. part of the problem was because you know some places got thirty inches plus of rain, and those mountains that yeah. cause an orographic lift. So when the that that air, that moist air, yeah. rises up on the mountains, it literally rings out every ounce oh, of moisture. Just... And so, and then of course you've got these massive torrential downpours mm. and, and uh, mudslides. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that's a major story we are going yeah. to continue to follow for days. Another major story that could could take a few days to play out this potential labor dispute it could cripple the nation's supply chain as soon as tonight tens of thousands of dock workers from maine to texas are threatening to strike in a matter of hours and it could disrupt nearly half of all of the goods shipped into the u.s nbc's senior business correspondent christine romans is following this one for us. so christine first of all for folks who haven't been following this and i, I don't think a lot of folks have been yeah, hmm. well, why are they talking about potentially going on strike and how widespread could a strike be? So they're at an impasse over a six-year contract here, and they are at the end. I mean, midnight tonight is when this contract is up, and you got 25,000 of these longshoremen who say they're going to walk off the job. They want higher pay, and they want less automation because, frankly, automation of the of the trucks and the gates and the ports is something that they worry could put them uh, out of business. Now, if they close tonight at midnight, as everyone expects will happen, it's a big cost overall to the economy. J.P. Morgan says between $3.8 billion to $4.5 billion a day. Wow. Hey, if there's a strike, a short strike, the economy could absorb, of course. But the longer it goes on, every day you're closed at these big ports, it takes like five days to catch up. So that's a real knock-on effect in an election year and right ahead of the, mm. the holiday shopping season. That's and if we're talking about all these goods, I mean, what does that mean for consumers? Do, would they yeah. have to pick up the, the cost? When you think about what we're talking about here, a big swath of the East Coast and the Gulf Coast. So it's Boston all the way down to Houston. And you've got mm. cars that are going through here, auto parts. You've got imports from all these major companies um you've got cherries and frozen chicken and all oh, kinds of things everything. are coming through here so it really is the artery for the economy uh, it could either mean one or two things it could mean higher prices so freight costs will go up as these companies find other ways to move their products on air or rail so freight costs go up then somebody's got to pay for that right it could mean some economists are telling me they're worried about scattered and sporadic job loss maybe mm. in manufacturing because Factories can't get the parts they, they need, parts. right? Yeah. So it's a, it's watch this space. It okay. is a, a big deal. I know you'll keep us posted. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. much. All right. Well, coming up in today's checklist, we are helping you save as insurance costs surge. The easy changes to cut those costs, and later. today. Thanks. All right. We're going to go on here. Sits around and does nothing. You know, younger, under 50. Harris only ahead. By the course of history and the course of history can just news vice presidential debate on So it's been a little bit of both, actually. A couple of the folks that I've talked to have had uh, summertime homes here. Mm -hmm. So they're in a different location, wondering if their vacation home is still intact. And several others have been just, uh, they had evacuated uh, wow. just before the flooding started to come in, or they actually left their vehicles and their belongings back at the house. And when the water receded, they were walking out and climbing over the de debris and got a ride out of harm's way. And the folks that I was talking to a little bit uh, before I made my way in further were trying to get back to the Airbnbs because they were there on weddings or on vacation to reclaim their belongings and get their vehicles out so they could get out of this disaster area. And Aaron, have you talked to some of the survivors? Are there any stories besides the one that you just shared? Any stories about uh, about help, about how they're banding together or anything that really stands out to you? 
Yeah, and that's one thing that is kind of a breath of fresh air during these events is that you see so many communities come together, helping strangers helping strangers, neighbors helping neighbors. And there's been several instances of intense rescue stories, especially from the hard hit Chimney Rock, North Carolina area. I talked to uh, a woman there that had been communicating with someone that she works with, and she was trying to make her way out of harm's way and was actually overtaken by the flood wire and carried her truck off of the roadway and pinned it up against a uh like a like a mountainside she was able to thankfully get out okay and she was in good spirits because she even cracked a joke about all of her warning lights on in her vehicle but there's just been story after story of survival and people just could not believe how fast that wall of water came in they said it went from just a little bit above average to multiple feet of water just carrying logs down the river and smashing into the bridge they said they started seeing vehicles floating by and several people I've talked to, and when I had my drone up, I did not realize this at the time, they told me that there were supposed to be houses there and they were just all wiped clean wow. from those powerful floodwaters. Wow, that really puts it into perspective. It I mean, the, the images and videos, do, you know, only show half the story actually being there, uh, like Aaron has been, being our eyes on the ground, and important to hear some of those stories and uh, how people were surviving. And, and remember, these storm chasers are not just capturing footage. They're there to help people as well. And I know Aaron has done that throughout his career, and he'll continue to do that moving forward. Aaron Rigsby, live in uh, Nebo, North Carolina, heading toward the mountains of North Carolina. All right, now into the northeast here because it's also been just a gloomy pattern and other people are probably wondering, when is it going to stop raining here? Yeah, that would be a, a nice thing. Uh, again, totally different atmosphere when you get your way out of hard hit areas like western North Carolina because here we didn't necessarily overly need the rain, but it wouldn't have been bad. However, the clouds sticking around for days, not fun. Uh, you can see plenty of clouds here across so much of the northeast visible satellite just lighting it up and saying, yep, we're stuck with it throughout the day. This is not moving out of here. For Pittsburgh, by the way, visibility is around two miles. So that kind of gives you a sense when we should have 10 miles of visibility on a nice day down to two miles. How dreary, how moist, how cloudy it has been. And underneath those clouds, yes, we still have showers, drizzle, and even uh, some areas of moderate rainfall coming down. You can see that across states like Pennsylvania, into parts of northern West Virginia and portions of Maryland. Plenty of drizzle extending over West Virginia and into Ohio, where they do have exceptional droughts. So drops of rain, welcomed. We honestly probably didn't even get enough to really truly do any sort of dent in this drought, but the moisture at least and keeping things from drying out even further is uh, nice to have. So some good news there. I guess if you can say these cloudy skies are producing good news. Like I said, we're stuck with the moisture as we go into tomorrow too. So it's not just today. We're going to keep this low around. I wish I had better news for those of you that do desire a little bit more sunshine, but uh, we will have at least not as much rain as uh, some of those sites that have been so hard hit across North Carolina and even portions of Western Virginia. You can see most of this rain is not going to add to those flooding problems, so that's some good news. Pittsburgh, showery, drizzly as we head through today. As we step into tomorrow, kind of more of the same, if you will. 72 for that high in Pittsburgh, 70 in New York City. We're kept down with even a little bit of an easterly flow coming in over this low. their races right and the polls in the Tara Comante he's a um... so that comes back is look what's been stated is we want to protect our civilians who live along the border we've been along the border what does it look like that looks like Hezbollah in a house in a village next to the border they can pop up at a window with a shoulder launched rocket uh, anti-tank rocket or whatever and fire it at a house uh, an Israeli house perhaps half a mile a mile away that's what we understand from our sources this initial phase would be about to take control of that area where Hezbollah has sort of free range to pop into houses, launch a rocket mm. and pop out again. Um, can they limit it to that? It's not clear. What does it look like on the ground? Does it mean scorched earth, raised ground, all those buildings overlooking uh, Israel? Does that mean they're gone in, in a month's time? It's not clear. But a buffer zone of a kilometre to two kilometres of what is, is what we're hearing. 
This would be working on the momentum that Benjamin Netanyahu and his government, his military now have in the wake of not just the taking out of Hassan Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, who has waged war on Israel and um, has been involved in, in other um, activities around this wider region. It would be to ensure that they take advantage of that momentum and, and get in on the ground to clear the threat for some 60,000 Israelis, as we understand it, who have now had to leave those towns and villages. Of course, many, many people displaced on the other side of the border in southern Lebanon. The question is, as we talk about this incursion being limited in scope, the optics, though, will be clear. This is Israel going into Lebanon and waging war. And the optics will also be, well, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has broad political support, cross-party support for the killing of Hassan Nasrallah, for the really decimating uh, of the Hezbollah leadership at the moment, and, and the understanding of the population that if you're going to press the advantage against Hezbollah, this is the moment to do it. It will also be seen as the as as an achieve not just an achievement for the Prime Minister but something that he wants for his own political survival. So there will be also sort of a, a realistic, pragmatic, but cynical view of, of why the Prime Minister is doing this. But to your point, um, and uh, when I raise that as the understanding about the Prime Minister doing things for his own political survival, because the calculus here is that the lessons of 2006 incursion, the lessons of 1982 going in and pulling out in, in 2000, many years later, without removing Hezbollah, let's face it, they've built up so much since both of those, that it's been costly for the IDF. But I was in a briefing with a very senior official, very well informed about all of this, a few weeks ago, and he said there is no such thing as a limited incursion. It becomes a deeper incursion. So to your point, have the lessons of history been learned? It's not clear, and the critics would, if they haven't been learned, in a month's time, the critics would be saying, this is... There's that word again, lesson. I had no idea that I was fixing to turn on this particular channel, but I wanted to bring something out to my viewers for what it's worth. God had showed me late Friday afternoon whenever I had walked out of Martin Walmart, whenever I looked at a sky that was absolutely luminous in detail of what it was saying. And I had an eerie feeling about what I was looking at. And I've had eerie feelings before. But if we, as mortals down here on the planet, cannot figure out what Mother Nature is trying to tell us during the time that it's telling us, then we are doomed. And if we cannot learn our lessons because of what we're doing to ourselves and what we're doing to Mother Earth, What's more, we are doomed. There is lessons. And the purpose for the lessons is to tweak, enhance, change, re-revolutionize, whatever word you want to use in exchange towards changing that even Obama run on, the word change, in changing our dispositions in how we worship God and what we are doing down here on the planet to not only one another, but what we're doing to the planet. If not, we are doomed. And it may have reached a point already, going over basically the, the uh, Rubicon, to the point that we may already be doomed because the damages that that we have done to Mother Earth, we are only beginning to see, frightfully see, only some of the occurrences that's happening because whenever the Bible talks about that as you shall see the days approaching that no flesh shall be saved, that has to be one of the most frightfulest verses in the Bible other than mankind's souls being thrown into hell because they was not worthy to enter into the kingdom of God because of 
whatever reasons. Maybe they was too mean. Maybe they just didn't believe. Maybe they was anti-Christ to begin with. I don't know. But to see the scriptures indicate that as we shall see, tangibly see, the days approaching, that absolutely no flesh upon this planet shall be saved. You're talking about the extinction of everything on this planet that was already recorded, already documented, and already forecasted or prophesied to happen over 2,000 years ago whenever Christ was walking and talking amongst us in, in human form. To see the devastation of one storm after another storm after another storm in, in which I don't I can't even put it into proper words of some of the stuff that I have seen just in the past 48 to 72 hours on social media pertaining to what those poor people are are have went through and what those poor people are going to have to go through in these devastated areas. I do not have I do not have proper words in the in depth of the seriousness of everything that has went on. And that's just one storm. And there's another one brewing that probably by Sunday or Monday will wind up hitting landfall somewhere. We don't know what it's going to do or how it's going to respond or what it's going to react. I'm, I'm telling you folks, if there's ever been a time that we needed to get down and serious with God and really and truly become authentic with our relationships, and right now I'm talking to myself, it is up today. It is up today because I've never seen so much distress. I've never seen so much bad stuff occurring at the same time on planet Earth to the mortals down here. So whenever the Bible talks about that whenever you shall start to begin to see these things, woe be unto the inhabitants here upon to the earth. Woe upon to the inhabitants here upon the earth. Woe be unto the inhabitants here upon the earth. That's exactly what it means. There ain't no tainting. There ain't no tickling. There ain't no flavoring. There ain't no compromising. Whenever it says woe, it means woe. And I've tried to warn people and tell them again and again and again about these events that's going to hit planet earth and rather than people listening and paying attention from all indications i'm still being either ignored or being hated on account of it either or it's just as bad as far as i'm concerned to either be hated because you're trying to save their lives and help them or be ignored and we have seen this throughout history if you know anything at all about the bible towards other men of God, other men and women of God that was given a divine message that people brushed off as it being nonchalant. And the next thing you know, that whole culture or that whole generation of people suffered on account of. I cannot emphasize enough on what occurred that should not have occurred going back 30 plus years ago whenever the White House and certain people in Northwest Tennessee was going to brush off by thinking that this was some sort of a fluke or that I myself was some sort of a uh, hoax in the message that the Windmill Ministries missions was putting out to the world. I hope now that certain people, I'm not trying to be judgmental, I'm not trying to to bring condemnation into their lives. I'm just saying I hope now, since COVID, since all these other bad events, since seeing the war over in Ukraine, since seeing what's going on in the Middle East, I hope now that they can understand 
that because of what they didn't do, that they should have done, has now put everybody in behind the eight ball. And I know I'm still sounding like the bad news bear, but I'm sorry. You know, I, I'm looking at at reality and staring at reality towards what reality is staring back at me. And if I was looking at good, I would tell you about the good. If I was looking at a pretty flower, I would tell you about the pretty flower. If I was looking at the achievements of of this person versus the achievements of of this animal or whatever, I would tell you about those things. But as of right now, I have been flooded with negativity because of this rebellious movement. It is so sad that the human race continues to make the same mistakes again and again, but expecting different results. That's a sign of insanity. Critics will be saying, this is all for the Prime Minister. Good to have you, Nick. Nick Robertson with me here in Tel Aviv. That is all that we have time for today, but we have a lot more top-rate analysis for you across all of our platforms, including this latest piece by uh, CNN's veteran Middle East correspondent Ben Whedon, my colleague, about Israel's ambitions to change the balance of power in the region. He writes, uh, Israel's leader sees an opportunity opening up for a fundamental reconfiguration of power in the Middle East, and he may assume that Hezbollah are mortally wounded. He goes on to say total victory, however, is elusive, and those who get what they wish for often live to regret it. You can head to our website for that piece and an awful lot more. You can also scan that barcode on the bottom of your screen to sign up for our Meanwhile in the Middle East newsletter. We'll send you our top stories straight to your inbox at three times a week. It is a jolly good read. Do uh, sign up for that. That's it for Connect the World from the team working with me here in Tel Aviv. It's a very good evening. So by halting, by stopping or delaying the intentions that God had for the Windmill Ministries missions going back 30 plus years ago. Whenever I talk about these things, uh, I'm not just talking to hear myself rattle. I'm just not talking to hear myself talk. I'm telling the truth about the complications that now has set in from A to Z, from our road structure, our, our infrastructure, to people now having to deal with diseases that they wouldn't have been dealing with 30 plus years ago, dealing with problems with the wars, dealing with problems with Mother Nature. Just just basically, it has, it has shoved society off into such a, a, of a dilemma because of this rebellious movement. I, I can't even begin to famine what it's going to be like a, another year from now or five years from now or 10 years from now. People think that this is some sort of a joke. It's never been a joke in my life, pertaining to my life being spared in 1983. And ever since I made a telephone call to the White House pertaining to the Antichrist, my life has been totally knocked off scale from a average, everyday, normal person. And it's strictly because of the spirituality, divineness, that I've been trying to promote. And of course, whenever you're dealing with spiritual warfare, people that just is dead set that they ain't going to hear it, they ain't going to hear it, kind of like Tony Smith. Well, you ain't got to cram it down my throat, he said. Okay. Or like Tommy Moore. Well, the people around here think that you, you're, you're, you're committing some sort of a, a mandate. It's, it's beyond me. I guess when, when, when you sit and really analyze the things that we have observed just within the past 72 hours, it is absolutely beyond me. 
especially whenever the intentions of that person was the intentions of wanting to help humanity while they was putting you in this category of somebody that was wanting to hurt humanity. It's not a manifesto. Like Tommy Moore, the judge in Weekly County, wanted to try to promote the message coming from the Windmill Ministries missions <clears throat> of putting it on the same level as some sort of a have to, must case. It's not a manifesto. But I tell you what it is. It is the word of God. And it is something that we can't taint. It is something that we can't duplicate. It is something pertaining to time and reality. And as I have stated before, no, I cannot make the horse, after getting him to the water trough, drink. But what God can do is make people wish that they had a f it's the same thing as people not accepting the Lord Jesus Christ into their life towards their personal Savior and actually allowing for God to be their Lord. God can't make nobody do nothing that they truly don't want to do. But what he can do is make you wish that you had a ultimately in the end, especially whenever you're separated from God and you're in hell and you're screaming and hollering because of your torment, your spiritual torment pertaining to your um, spiritual soul. At that point in time, you were, will regret that you did not make the right decisions in life. But by that time, I'm just afraid that it would be too late. This is all based around the spiritual war that began with Lucifer and God, the Antichrist, the false prophet, that if you know anything at all about the Bible, you know what's going to happen to those entities. It's not a joke. It's not a con. It's not a demand. It's not a manifesto. It's God. And that's the best and only way that I know how to express it. It's kind of like whenever God was speaking directly to Moses and Moses asked, well, what do I tell the people of who you are? What your name is? And God replied back, I am what I am. And I am who I am. I am the great I am. There's no other way to put that into the proper category of it being what it is. And if the human race can't understand that and don't want to accept that, that's not my fault. As I have said before and I'll say again, Dennis James Jackson did not and has not failed the windmill ministry's missions towards being effective, towards getting his message out before the people. Dennis Jackson did not fail the windmill ministry's missions. It was rather the other way around. It was the people that failed Dennis Jackson or failed the ministry that Dennis Jackson was called into. Just like that bunch up there in LBL trying to accuse me of me challenging the system. No, I'm not challenging the system. According to the way that I've always understood the history of America, the system is challenging me because they were supposed to have left me alone going all the way back to 1989 whenever Homeland Security decided to intervene in Madison County, Jackson, Tennessee, by intervening into a ministry that they never should have intervened in. Because at that time, while I was taking my baby steps growing, They did not want the windmill ministry to succeed. Well, these are the consequences on account of it. 
And you can not only explain that to Homeland Security, Secret Service, but you can explain that to every other Tom, Dick, and Harry that has been confronted with Dennis Jackson or the Windmill Ministries missions in some form or fashion, that now, like Tony Smith, okay, I'm not going to force nothing down your throat, but what I can do is bring out the fact that if you would have listened and if you would have supported the man of God at that time that was bringing forth the message, we would have already been taken out of this hellhole. And that's exactly what planet Earth is turning into. It is turning into a, a point of reference of misery. And as I have said before, I say again, the planet is regurgitating itself up onto these humans and it's trying to tell these humans again and again and again what you're doing and you're not listening to the signs. You're not learning from the lessons. So what happens according to the Bible? That these sorrows will intensify in in the velocity of what's going on, even as a woman traveling with a child, that as her birth pains get more severe, they come even closer together and closer together and closer together and more severe until the actual delivery. That's what we're seeing. Now, if you'll put that into the perspective of what the Bible teaches, that as we shall tangibly be able to see these things approaching, that no flesh upon the planet shall be saved, it was a blessing in disguise whenever it says, but because of the elect, those days will be shortened. In other words, we're drawing closer and closer and closer to the end of time. And that was the very thing that basically those doctors in LaGrange, Kentucky, after being ordered by Judge Woodall in Trigg County, Kentucky, Katie's Kentucky, made fun of or mocked of whenever they looked at that picture that one of an inmate had drawn for me that talked about the end. And he questioned me and he said, the end of what? Because I, the picture illustrated the end is near. And as soon as I told him the end of the world, the man accused me of me being delirious and delusional and ordered immediately for me to be on some sort of drug called Risperdal that basically tainted my system of going from 240 to 340 in less than about 45 days. Now, you can't tell me the hell of these demons that's been trying to resist the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth about the end of time because they have. Oh, trust me, they have. And they have been fighting tooth and nail in every perspective you can imagine. But I got news for them. All the gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom of God. And that is the only reason why today I can make this video and record what I'm recording towards putting it out to the general public is because if it was not for the precious hand of God that has protected me again and again and again and again, I wouldn't be making this video. Now we're seeing the consequences of this planet being ravaged again and again and again. Because of this delay, of this resistance movement, now we're forced to stay here on the planet while we watch 
others suffer or ourselves put into the category of suffering. So whenever I look directly at Kenton, Tennessee, and Weekly County, Obion County, and we and Weekly County, Tennessee, and all these resistance movements of people, how that they have tried to stop this this message. I also look at them and say, you know what? It's your fault. It's your fault because right now we should have already seen a utopia. We should have already done went through a major revival that would have re-revolutionized the world into this this um, this time that we're living in. And because of all the non-believers and the resistors, it has put us where we are today. It has put us where we are today. That's the reason why I say good luck to all of us. That's the reason why I continue to say God bless America and God bless our troops. And God bless our endeavors towards where we go from this moment on. But then every time I put out the video, I get the same response. Which is zero. Silence. No supporters. And then I watch things escalate. And it going from bad to worser. From worser to worser. To worser to even worser. Knowing what the Bible teaches, that he will throw us off into a sickbed, and that all his churches shall know who scattered the reins in the hearts of humanity, and eventually, if we don't learn our lessons in the smaller form, that's whenever the great tribulation period will fall up into people's lives. And I promise you, the people that's been affected by this storm in five different states, especially those up in North Carolina, and Eastern Tennessee, in their life, pertaining to what that they have just endured or went through, that will be their great tribulation. And it could very well be ours knocking on our door tomorrow towards not knowing what's going to happen to us tomorrow. And that could come in the form of a car accident. It could come in the form of a disease. It could come in the form of a fire. It could come in the form of a of a raging hurricane or, or a tornado. It could come in the form of a flood. Because once you're in that extreme, that is your great tribulation. Because there will be people, I promise you, even though they may live through this, They will never get over it, either physically or emotionally or financially. They will never get over this because it has brought tribulation into their lives that they won't ever be able to recuperate from. And of course, whenever you, whenever you have done such as what I've done towards basically being a storm chaser or going around being a humanitarian, a humanitarianist and going from different storm, from storm to storm, and Katrina was the first one that I went to, you understand these things. And you understand the seriousness of these things pertaining to human beings' life. And it's not just human beings' life, but it's all the other life that goes along with that. Squirrels, rabbits, deer, raccoons. Anything that's got to do with that ecosystem has now been disturbed in that area. Has been disturbed. And we used to see the the Category 4 and 5 hurricanes, or, or Category 3 hurricanes, whatever, Every 100 years, and then it went down every 50 years, and then it went down every 20 years, and then it went down every 10 years. And now we're seeing these type of illustrations. I'm going to call them illustrations because of the planet warming up the way that it is every year. So by me sitting here talking to you right now, those that are listening... By me telling you that things are going to get better. 
whenever it comes to the forces of nature, I would be lying to you. This is what greed, this is what stupidity has done to all of us. This is what the works of the Luciferian Lucifer in Saudi Arabia has helped to promote as far as blinding people's eyes for the past 30 plus years in thinking that they was going to get away with this with all these oil industries pumping all this oil out of the ground that is warming this planet up the way that it is. This is what we have have to look forward to. So whenever I talk about the death of a human being that was born by evil demonic spirit, and I talk about that this human being deserves to die and go back to hell where it come from, I'm not speaking lightly of these things. And those that know that they was doing harm to the planet, by draining more and more resources from the planet, they should go to jail. They should absolutely go to jail immediately because of what OPEC, Exxon, Shell, Valve, and all the other ones done during the latter part of COVID that come out in the year 2021, if I'm not mistaken, or 2020, maybe 2022, of having some of the highest, the highest proceeds as far as monetarily money that they have ever made in their entire lives, while the rest of us struggle, while the rest of us struggle, while the rest of us go through mortal hell. Is there consequences for making the wrong decisions? You dig them right, it is. And that's the part that still does not resonate with so many people here in Northwest Tennessee that could have grabbed the bull by the horns, but it was easier to put that individual in the category of being psychologically, emotionally, chemically imbalanced. Or it was easier for somebody like Tommy Moore to say, well, this is a manifesto. A lot of people think that this is some sort of manifesto, Juby, that you're that you're forcing upon the people. Well, now we can look back 30 plus years later, Tony Smith, that didn't want me to cram that down his throat. And I wonder what your opinion is about that message today. If you would have listened and supported the messenger rather than ignore or, or demonize and dehumanize a messenger, because that's exactly what has went on, that I can prove through event after event after event, even leading to the 2017 event, event whenever my brother died, and basically teetotal absolute hell busted loose in our lives here at 430 Beach Grove Road or at 291 Thompson Road, Sharon, Tennessee, zip code 32555. That once more I can prove. The decisions that certain people made in the White House going back into the latter part of Ronald Reagan's administration and Bush's administration, we're now seeing the consequences of those things on every level imaginable, from our bridges falling down to our road structure, uh, no longer being nice and pleasant like it used to be to ride over, from seeing all the diseases, from seeing all the weather patterns, to seeing all the wars, to seeing us being $35 trillion in debt, to seeing all the drugs, to seeing all the gun violence, to seeing everything and all the above. And you may be saying, well, Juby, ain't you, ain't you a little hard on these people? Am I? Am I being hard? Or am I being practical? Am I being logical? Especially when people like the Oklahoma 
um, media wanted to promote me as me being somebody that was out of touch with reality because I had discovered that they had not told the whole truth to their to their own people in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, pertaining to the victims of the Oklahoma bombing. And you want to look at me and tell me that I'm out of touch with reality? And now, a few years later, we can prove on paper that you did lie and you didn't tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, to the American people, especially those victims in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma? Really? I'm the one that's out of touch with reality? I'm telling you, friends, we have seen the characteristics of this again and again and again towards the hand of God illustrating his powers, his divine powers in giving somebody a message. And I'm just going to use uh, uh, the message of of uh, Noah out there because that's the one that's more, more fondest of people knowing about. But there's probably thousands of other cultures and other generations and other people that not, that hadn't even been recorded in the Bible that God moved upon trying to bring forth a warning, trying to bring forth an advisory that because they didn't listen, they paid the consequences for. In some form or fashion, they paid the consequences. Leaving behind devastated communities across six states, we're going to take you live to Asheville, North Carolina, one of the hardest hit communities. And a VP showdown. To All right, let's go forward. Let's see if we can capture that real quick, what you're talking about. We've already done looked at the war situation this morning on this video. National diplomatic editor Nick Robertson, he is in Tel Aviv, and also senior White House reporter Kevin Liptak. Nick, first to you, what more do we know about these raids in Lebanon? What more are you hearing? Well, they're, they're elite special forces that what we understand, and they, they have limited incursions going uh, across the border inside of uh, inside of uh, Lebanon uh, to to uh, gather intelligence on uh, potential Hezbollah targets there. So the, these are very limited. But of course, uh, we also understand from uh, sources in the United States that uh, officials there, that there is an expectation that this growing number of IDF forces along the border, the elite uh, 98th Division of Commandos, the uh, Gulani Brigade that uh, the Defense Minister was meeting with today, telling them um, that it's a very important first step, the killing of the Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasr but he said we will use all of our uh, components available to us. And he said, looking at the troops and talking to the troops, you are part of, of those uh, part of those elements that we will use. So the growing indication is that following on from these special forces, uh, intelligence gathering raids across the border, that there will be a larger force that may have a limited incursion. And the question will be, what does a limited incursion look like? And, and we've been talking to our sources about that over the past week as the IDF has really signaled with all the videos they've released of a build-up of the reserve forces, a build-up of tanks and armoured personnel carriers along the border. What does that look like? And what they say to us is... The commitment is to make sure that Israeli citizens, the 60,000 plus who've been evacuated from the border a year ago, can go back. What does that look like? They say they don't know specifically, but the houses that Hezbollah fires their shoulder launch rocket uh, attacks at the Israeli homes just across the border would be a prime, uh, a prime sort of real estate that the IDF would want to deny to Hezbollah, sort of try to create 
a one or two kilometer buffer zone. Um, we don't have details on that, but that's the expectation that's been created in the conversations we're having with our sources about the steps that might come immediately after the, the news that we're gathering today. What it looks like in a week's time or a few weeks' time is impossible to say, but, but a limited incursion. And I agree. I agree with what he's talking about in the sense that you cut off the way that you kill the snake, you cut off the snake's head. That's what I thought, or that's what everybody actually thought whenever we went to war in Desert Storm and Desert Shield, that our administration here that was directing everybody in that direction was after pertaining to whenever Dick Cheney said, well, we're actually going to bring stability to that region that we are after the axes of evil. You weren't after the axes of evil. I know for a fact that you wasn't after the axes of evil. You was after evil, but you wasn't after the axes of evil. That's the difference. You can't kill the snake by cutting off bits and pieces of its tail. You have to go after its head to be able to fully desecrate evil. Let's see what he's talking about here now. Would that be able to be? Back up a little bit. Right there. Actually, Biden's speaking right now. So yes, let's, let's listen. I spoke with, for a couple hours with leaders yesterday affected by the hurricane and uh, Governor Kemp of Georgia, Governor Cooper of North Carolina, county officials in the Big Bend region of Florida, and other leaders in South Carolina and Tennessee about the broad and devastating impacts of Hurricane Helene. It's not just a catastrophic storm, it's a historic history-making storm. The entire Southeast and Appalachia. Damage from the hurricane stretches across at least 10 states. Winds over 120 miles an hour in some places. Storm surges up to 15 feet and record flooding. Communities are devastated. Loved ones waiting, not sure if their loved ones are okay and they can't contact them because there's no cell phone connections. Many more folks this place have no idea when they'll be able to be returned to the home, if ever, if there's a home to return to. So we're keeping, our, we're keeping all in our prayers and all the lives lost. And <clears throat> those particularly are unaccounted for. There's nothing like wondering, is my husband, wife, son, daughter, mother, father alive? And many more who remain without electricity, water, food, and communications. And his homes and businesses are washed away in an instant. I want them to know we're not leaving until the job is done. I also want you to know I'm committed to traveling to the impacted areas as soon as possible. But I've been told that it would be disruptive if I did it right now. We will not do that at the risk of diverting or delaying any, any of the response assets needed to deal with this crisis. My first responsibility is to get all the help needed to those impacted areas. I expect to be there. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a cold. I expect to be there later this week. I and my team are in constant contact with the governors, mayors, and local leaders. The head of FEMA, Ann Griswell, is on the ground now in North, North Carolina. She's going to stay in Asheville and Appalachia region for the foreseeable future. There's been reports of over 100 dead in consequence of this storm, and there are reports of up 600, 600 people unaccounted for because they can't be contacted. God willing, they're alive, but there's no way to contact them again because of the lack of cell phone coverage. I've directed my team to provide every, every available resource as fast as possible to your communities to rescue, recover, and to begin rebuilding. In addition to FEMA, it includes the Federal Communications Commission to help establish communications capability, the National Guard, the Army Corps of Engineers and the Department of Defense are going to provide all the resources at its disposal to rescue and assist in clearing debris and delivering life-saving supplies. So far, <clears throat> that's over 3,600 personnel deployed. That number is growing by the day. I quickly approve requests from governors of Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, and <clears throat> Virginia, and Alabama for an emergency declaration. And I approved additional requests for the governors of North Carolina, Florida, South Carolina, 
and for a disaster declaration to pay for to pay for debris removal provide financial assistance directly directly to survivors fema and the small business administration are there to help the residents whose homes and business were literally destroyed washed away or blown away and the federal search and rescue teams have been working side by side with state and local officials and partners in very treacherous conditions to find those who are missing did you hear what he said treacherous conditions very treacherous this to me went beyond treacherous rainfall this this was an absolute historic deluge and what even brought insult to misery is that they had already been hammered like three or four days before this over in the Appalachian Mountains with so much rain and they went from being like in the middle of of a drought one day to what you're looking at on the far right of your of your uh, screen there how can mother nature be that raw how can mother nature be that extreme of going from one extreme to another that quickly I'm going to tell you how Mother Nature can do it. Because of what we're doing to her. And what we're doing to one another. That even the Bible talked about. The woes. Woe be unto the inhabitants here upon to the planet Earth. Whenever you shall start to begin to see these things occurring. There can't be a more dire warning than that. Whenever the Bible is expressing itself, pertaining to the woe, and we're not listening. We're not grasping the severity of this. It's, it's completely, and to think that these horrendous things are bombarding the planet right now on one continent or the other, again and again and again towards being ravaged. And, and there's another one building right now below below some of the islands, below Cancun, Mexico, that who knows in the next three or four days what it's going to do or, or where it's going to go. Once it gets out into those warm waters that are about 87 to 89 to 91 degrees, it's just adding fuel to the fire. But yet now we keep putting these environmental issues on the back burner. Like we're a bunch of environmental nuts. I'm telling you, Al Gore in the year 2000 running against Bush pegged it directly 100% on the head. Because he had access at that time to all other types of information going on all over the world with other scientists, with other meteorologists, with other types of people that he was trying to help and not hurt. But the people in the state of Tennessee declared him as him being a nut. Just like the people around in this area declared Dennis Jackson as him being a nut. Just like the people declared Noah during his time of him being a nut. Until it was too late. Until it was too late. This is an absolutely unprecedented event. But the thing about it is we continue to see these unprecedented events again and again and again. And like I said a while ago, you know, it used to be every 100 years, used to be every 50 years, used to be every 20 years used to be every 10 years and now we're seeing it almost every year and if it's not coming in one form pertaining to it being extremely dry by seeing all the fires it's coming in other forms and whenever i say other forms i'm not just talking about floods and fires i'm talking about diseases i'm talking about divorces i'm talking about communities split apart i'm talking about us being 35 trillion dollars in debt and continue for the 80th time are, are more of talking about shutting the government down. 
I'm talking about seeing all the illegals coming over to this border over here that we 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 don't know what's going on. In the meantime, they're steadily diminishing our resources. And every time that there's an event like this, it is diminishing the resources, regardless whether it's happening in the good old USA or it's happening in Canada with all their fires that they was having a few years ago that was burning all their forestry down. Thank God that's not going on this year. Not as bad anyway. But then there's other areas of the of the world that are going through extremes. And in the middle of these extremes, it's diminishing and making the problem go from bad to even worse. Just like over there in Russia, whenever they blowed up that dam and they flooded all that, um, all that agriculture territory over there, what do you think that done to people's lives? What do you think that that done on a man-made scale done to people's lives and we got idiots that rather seek out cruelty to each other than they would to behave and treat one another decent and then on the same token we got people that wants to once more demonize or dehumanize people like the leader of Israel in doing what he's doing towards trying to defeat the problems that his people has to see again and again and again. I've told you before in some of my other work, I'm not a war analyst. I'm not a Winston Churchill. A matter of fact, I'm just the other way around. I'd rather see love grace, forgiveness. I'd rather see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit pertaining to seeing a, a, a utopia, even though it may be only a temporary utopia. I'd rather see humanity getting along and being prosperous and, and treating our planet the way that we're supposed to be treating our planet towards being good stewards. I'd rather see all the good things than see all the bad. But this is the repercussions of that stifling moment that happened in the lifespan of the Windmill Ministries missions of people trying to reject it, unaccept it, not support it, whatever word you want to use. Like Tony Smith said, you're not cramming this down my throat. Okay? If you don't want this crammed down your throat, Mr. Smith that I worked for for five years in Milan, Tennessee, take a good long look to your right side of your screen. Because now this is what's being crammed down your throat. The harshness of Mother Nature that can come just as easily in one form as it does another. For these churches around here to have rejected or for somebody like Tommy Moore to make accusations while in court that you be, they see you as you being like a Unabomber trying to make a manifesto, which is basically somebody that's mandating something. Hey, I can only lead you to the water trough. I can't make you drink. And as I've said, and I'll say again, but what can happen is that God in behind that messenger can tell you, you should have listened because regrettably you'll regret that you didn't take those drinks. You'll regret that you didn't support that ministry. You'll regret that you didn't listen to a divine message that was coming from the heavenly father pertaining to the end time messages of the false prophet, the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, the two witnesses, the opening of the first seven seals, the opening of the first horseman, the things that the latter part of Daniel teaches and tells us about, the things that the Bible in general warns us about, and the things that the book of Revelations 
is about. And they'll not rest until everyone's accounted for. I want to thank all, all the first responders and everyone who's been working around the clock. One of the brave teams who's volunteered to be there is from San Diego County Fire Department, set to travel all the way from California to North Carolina to help. But on their way, they were in a, yes. in a terrible car accident in Louisiana. We pray for their full recovery. Yes, absolutely, accident. absolutely. We know there's more to do. We'll continue to surge resources, <coughs> including food, water, communications, and life-saving equipment. We'll be there, as I said before, and I mean it. I went to Union City uh, yesterday, late yesterday evening, and I noticed that there was a lot, a lot of activity going on up here at the National Guard Armory up here in Union City, Obion County. And I'm pretty sure that they're, they're coming together and determining how many men that are women that they need to send out and where they need to send them out towards being the most effective because this is this is something that 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 is on the level of Katrina if not bigger in certain areas it's just absolutely um unimaginable and and if you think that everybody's going to do the proper and right things you're you're thinking wrong there's going to have to be some sort of law and order. There's going to have to be some sort of a, a mandated um, way of being able to make sure that you keep the bad people and the bad actors out of there that's going to be trying to loot and, and take advantage of people's lives. And there's just so much in something like this that has to be done that we we are becoming more and more acquainted with ever since Katrina. Like I said, that was one of the first storms that I basically sharpened my teeth on. And then from then on, for the next seven years, I followed catastrophe after catastrophe after catastrophe. Not in the sense of filming tornadoes or hurricanes, but in the sense towards coming in behind and doing restoration and doing humanitarian work and listening to testimony after testimony after testimony of basically one horror story after another. That was, that was what God was calling me to do because I knew that these people needed help, regardless whether it was a tornado in, in Middle Tennessee or a flood over here in Union City, Tennessee, or something that happened in Hickman pertaining to a tornado that ravaged their area and killed over 100 people in the middle of winter, right before Christmas time. It's, we're seeing a pattern of these events of the planet earth and the people on the planet earth being ravaged again and again and again and unless we stop and take a breather and try to dissect all this i'm telling you now we are on a trajectory of doom and gloom and i think certain people can now start to awaken to this. Or I pray to God that they can. I know that there's nothing that we can do about the past. The past is the past. It's kind of like spilt milk. Once the milk is spilt, the milk is spilt. Once the toothpaste is out of the tube, you can't put it back in. I understand that. So I'm not rearing up and trying to dehumanize those that should have been accountable for years ago that even to this day are still not being accountable for. But what I am saying, we need to put things in the proper perspective because we're not learning from the lessons. And the lessons are only intensifying and becoming more frequent and becoming even harsher again and again, and again, just like Christ said that it would be as a woman traveling towards her birth pains, getting worse and worse and worse, harder and harder and harder, and becoming closer and closer until 
the actual birth. Christ used that particular that particular illustration as an example for a reason talking about the woes. And if you don't get it, and if you don't understand it, then that's your fault. If you're like somebody like Tony Smith, well, you ain't going to cram that down my throat, okay? We ain't going to cram it down your throat. But what we will do is sit back and watch how that if you don't pay attention to these things, what the consequences of them are by not grasping and pulling together. Those are facts. I, I, I can't deny the facts. Neither nor can you. We're seeing it live. We're seeing these things that, that used to be abnormal now becoming normal. Now the next question is, what are we going to do about it? How can we prevent it? How can we stop it? I don't know that we can. I think that we went beyond the Rubicon whenever it comes to the damages that we've done to Mother Earth. We make it slow it down. But that would be if everybody cooperated at the same time, including China and all these other countries, trying to re-event our communications and our lifestyles in a different form. And I'm not seeing that. I don't think nobody else is seeing that. Not on the scale that we need to be seeing that on. And because of it, we're seeing the consequences. We're seeing the harshnesses of it. Well, I mean it. As long as it takes to finish this job. Let me close with this. As president, I've seen firsthand the devastating toll that disasters like this take on families and communities. I've been on the ground in many disasters areas since I've been president. Excuse <coughs> me, I've heard dozens of stories from survivors about how it feels to be left with nothing, not even knowing where or when you're back on track. Exactly. I'm here to tell every single survivor in these impacted areas that we will be there with you as long as it takes. For the sake of yourself, excuse me, <clears throat> and your families, I urge everyone, every return in their communities and home, to listen to local officials and follow all safety instructions. Amen. Take this seriously. Please be safe. Your nation has your back, and the Biden Harris administration will be there until the job is done. I will say this about the Walmart in, in Union City. I don't know about the Walmart in Martin. They're probably doing the same thing that they have put out. Um, advisories as they're checking you out, pretending the Red Cross, the victims in all this, of rather not you would be willing to give towards rounding out your numbers instead of instead of it being, let's say, fifteen dollars and twenty eight cents, well let's make it uh sixteen dollars. That way that seventy two cents or whatever it is goes to Red Cross. I have noticed that Walmart has made a strong move in that department lining up with Red Cross to be able to help the victims. And I'm going to say that that's a good thing. That is a real good thing. And if Walmart can do it, all these other businesses can do it too as well. And I know you may say, well, that's just a little bit of change. That's just a little bit of pennies on a dollar. Well, it may be, but if everybody does it, you will be surprised at the help that it will be able to help people that right now are, are at the state of what they're in. And if this was going on in your life, I know it would be in mine. I would be grateful for every red cent that I could get right now. It wouldn't matter if it was an old dirty pair of socks it wouldn't matter if it was a used, uh, worn out, um, whatever. Everything matters whenever you're dealing with these type of situations. And for the business sector to pull together the way that I've seen Walmart pulling together, just as of last night, I was in Walmart up here in Union City, and I thought that 
is a wise and very noble thing to be doing right now that really and truly all businesses should be inclined towards doing. Rounding out the numbers. Hey, it may not be but 15 cents going to Red Cross, but it's 15 cents that they wouldn't have got if somebody didn't do that. And then the next person, it may be 45 cents, maybe 72 cents. Now you got that choice. They'll ask you, would you like to donate? And you have the choice of saying, no, I don't want to donate to this cause. Which, if that's what, the way you feel, then that's the way you feel. I personally wish that I could give every dime that I had to the people in need right now. I know that logically I can't do that. Because if I do, then I'm going to become strained. But what I can do is give a little at a time or give to these known um, entities that are to be trusted like Red Cross. And there's other ones out there too as well. It ain't just Red Cross. There's other uh, um, nonprofits out there that that have done an excellent job. The Cajun Navy and all of this was called upon. That as far as I'm concerned, they are an entity that really needs to be supported. These, these, uh, these people that deal with people, human beings, lives during the time that they're going through what they're going through. We cannot, we cannot vouch in speaking well enough for these people, regardless whether it's Red Cross, National Guard, regardless whether it's somebody like the Cajun Navy or, or it's uh, Feed the Hungry or whatever. There's all kinds of different uh, affiliations out there. And one of the things that I was thinking about, and I don't mean to be interrupting with the president's speech, but he's getting ready to end it anyway here. One of the things that I was thinking about, because I've been all up and down through Asheville, all up and down through those little old towns. Meggie's Valley, Robinsonville, North Carolina, Cherokee, on on the North Carolina side as well as the, as well as the Tennessee side. Um, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if Billy Graham's, the original Billy Graham headquarters, outside of Asheville, North Carolina, I wonder if they sustain any type of damage or any type of flooding, because they're pretty close. They're like probably less than 20 or 30 miles. And I've been to their big flea markets up there in North Carolina in the summertime. I've, I've seen how many people that, that dwells in that area. The only thing that I can do is like I told you all ago, regardless whether it's 15 cents here or 85 cents here or a dollar here or a dollar there, every thing counts whenever it comes to human lives. So please, please, if you can help a little or a lot, if you can donate that bedspread, if you got some extra socks or clothes, whatever, this is a time of pulling together. Bless you all, and I figure those are still wondering where your loved ones are. Thank you. Do you need to uh, be <coughs> supplemental to help the people in the Southeast, Mr. President? Say again? Well, you need to ask Congress for a supplemental. That's my, my expectation, yes. Do you know roughly how much you're thinking? Not yet. It's been this a historic storm. It's devastating. They've never seen anything like this before. And some of them are back-to-back, -back, three storms in a row. So it's really, really devastating. Would you have to start asking Congress to come back? That is something I may have to request, but uh, no decisions been made yet. Do you have a sense of where you'll go when you are able to go, sir? Yes, I've told the governor of, of uh, North Carolina to go down, and, I, and I'm, I expect to be down there by Wednesday or Thursday. It would be clear for me to go. You guys have traveled with me. You know, as an entourage, it's... Uh, uh, this can be disruptive. Is there any chance for President Trump to be down there today in Georgia? Is that disruptive? I, I don't have any idea. Uh, on another issue uh, on the other side of the world in the Middle East, uh, is there I'm going to stick with this. What's that? I'm going to stick with this subject, but go ahead. I've, I've well, it's the fact looking. that Israel may be now launching a limited <clears throat> operation in the Lebanon. Are you aware of that? Are you comfortable with their plan? I'm more aware than you might know, and I'm comfortable with them stopping. We should have a ceasefire now. Amen. Amen. Mr. President, why weren't you and Vice President Harris 
All right, we've just been listening to U.S. President Joe Biden there. He spoke for about five to six minutes Wait a second, there, wait a second, wait a second. Helene relief efforts, uh, just a few takeaways. He talked about... Actually, let's go back. Is it not important for the country to see? All right, I missed that that last bit, we'll, but we'll see if our control room can communicate to me what exactly he was asked, uh, because the conversation did shift to the Middle East toward the end. Yeah. Um, but back to Hurricane Helene, he said a few things. He talked about the 100 people um, that we know of who have been killed, but he also said there are 600 people who are unaccounted for. Um, he said, God willing, they are alive, but communication is so poor that they cannot be accessed. They cannot be communicated with. And that just sort of gives you a sense of the level of, of damage and destruction that is still present in Western North Carolina. Um, he talked about uh, FEMA. He talked about the FEMA administrator being there on the ground. And I hope that this makes a little bit better sense. The reason why Homeland Security basically advised every human being here in America to always have a little bit of cash, always have emergency goods stored up a little here or there. It makes all the difference in the world because if you get caught up in a scenario like this and you don't see, if can't nobody get to you for four, five, six days, that can make all the difference in the world towards you either surviving or not surviving. If all the electronics is down, and the only way that you can go to the supermarket and maybe get a bag of chips or a bottle of water is that you got to have cash on you. That makes a difference in an event like this. We have become so self-reliant on data and computer and artificial intelligence and all the above. I'm just so afraid that it's going to leave us in such of a shape ultimately whenever there is an emergency and there'll be emergencies there'll be problems i'm telling you right now it's not going to get better until we all see a major spiritual movement upon this planet towards trying to formigate and making it better but the projector that we're on right now it's only going to get worse we're only going to see more natural catastrophes all over the world, it's even going to get worse. And every time that happens, it diminishes on the resources. Everything is based upon supply and demand. When you've got more of a demand and you do a supply, guess what happens to the supplies? They go up. And this is what we're seeing. And this is what we're going to continue to see. This game that the oil typhoon mega energy players have played upon to society has been a very, very cold-hearted, cruel game. And seeing inflation and economies failing all over the world is a consequence of that. So whenever I say what I say in response to these people needs to go to jail, I realize that I haven't went out here and bought a battery car or I've engineered into other forms of energy other than the form of crude oil, gasoline going into my automobile for transportation. But I can't do nothing any different. Right now, our hands is tied. We're already straining to maintain what we already got. And to think that we're just going to be able to drop the ball and all of a sudden go out here and buy a brand new electrical mower or a brand new battery powered automobile, for the most part, most people, that's totally out of their range. And this is what government officials don't understand. Whenever they're up there running for whatever that they're running for, Whenever it comes to the form of real reality with real people with real problems. Now you may be asking, well, who and what has done this other than the experts that has obviously led us down the mouth of this volcano? I'm telling you, regardless whether you're a believer in the supernatural or not, evil has done this. Wickedness has done this. 
they have blinded society and deceived the world, which is a reflection upon to the book of Revelations out of the King James Version Bible, where it talks about after the thousand-year millennium reign, which is after the seven-year tribulation, it talks about the main battle of Armageddon in the spirit world, that they will go and gather together to Gog and Magog to go and deceive those again pertaining to the great fire that will fall out of New Jerusalem that will consume them. You cannot do that on the level that it's talking about in Revelations until that has been accomplished the first time. That is where we are. The devil, Satan, the Luciferian Lucifer, the Antichrist, has brought darkness into people's lives. And now we're seeing the consequences of that. And if we are not smart enough, intelligent enough, to figure out what our enemy is doing and what our enemy is has done and is still doing, then we are doomed. There's no other way to express it. There's no other way to lay it out there. I wish, as, as a bad news bear, I could tell you that everything was going to be hunky-dory and all this was just going to miraculously go away. But I refuse to lie to people like that. And for anybody to think that either the Democrat Party or the Republican Party is going to be able to magically wave a wand over everything and for it to go away overnight, they're living in a fantasy. It's a dream. It's a smoke dream. It's not going to happen. Not on that level, not as quick as what a lot of people would like for it to happen. We have become so spoil over here in America. We want everything instantly. We want our food instantly. We want this instantly. We want that instantly. We have been so spoiled over here in America. We have lost the reality of the concept of realness. That, as far as I'm concerned, artificial intelligence has even pushed society that much further away from the realness of reality. Because things just doesn't happen at the flip of a switch. Just like whenever the scientists went to the White House in Carter's era before Reagan was, was elected towards being the president and, and scientists explained to them this was what was going to happen if we continue to drill, 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 baby, drill. And this was what was going to happen if we continue to throw poisonous gases up into the atmosphere. And the response coming from the Carter's administration at that time was get back with us whenever it starts to happen and then we'll take it more serious. Well, it's not like you can flip a switch. Going back even 50 plus years ago, those people was living in fantasy world. They was not living in the real reality of where we are today towards seeing these consequences with all these major horrible events. We have been misled. We have been bamboozled. We have been deceived. Now the next question is, who is the deceiver? Who has thrown humanity off into this mess that we're in right now? Well, you don't have to be too educated to figure out that darkness is out to kill, steal, and destroy, and is the author of confusion. That is the very opposite of light. That is the very opposite of godliness. Now, whether or not you're an antichrist person, whether or not you don't want to listen to anything about the Holy Spirit and God and the precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that'll be up to you. That'll be up to you. But if you don't do it, I'm telling you now, there's going to be consequences. There's going to be major consequences. And I just hope that whenever it's all said and done with, that you're going to be man enough or woman enough to face those consequences because there's going to be consequences. 
the same consequences as it is if you don't maintenance your car properly, if you don't maintenance your body properly, if you don't brush your teeth properly, if you don't do this properly. The same consequences that if you don't uh, develop strong tidings with relationships, what the consequences of that is if you don't do that. There's always consequences if you don't do what you're supposed to do. And that's what we're seeing. And it's horrifying. It's absolutely horrifying. I, I, I have not got much sleep over the weekend. Like I said, Friday afternoon, whenever I walked out of the Martin Walmart and I looked at the sky and I took a picture of it and I put how ominous that it looked, I wanted to be sure and put that out there to the people because there was something within me that hit me as soon as I went out of Walmart and I seen the sky look the way that it did that actually took my breath. And it was so empowering, I actually showed the picture that I had taken while being in the front doors of Walmart to probably four or five different people trying to express to them how ominous that this actually looked. And some of them, some of them was floored by it. Some of them thought it was a cool picture. But they didn't understand the content of it. Of why would the sky have reeked that type of look at that particular moment, which was on Friday afternoon, give or take, maybe about 8 o'clock, just by the time the sun was setting, was whenever I seen that picture and took it. Those are signs. Those are messages. And the main messenger is Mother Nature. And if you don't listen to the messages coming from Mother Nature, then guess what? Get ready to suffer the consequences on account of it. Uh, the foreseeable future. He talked about funding toward the end, and this is where I want to bring back in my colleague, Kevin Liptak, who is in Washington for us. Kevin, sort of walk us through, there was a question about whether he plans to ask for a supplemental funding uh, from Congress, whether he plans to um, ask Congress to come back. Talk us through the politics of the moment and what you heard. Yeah, well, I think for any president, a hurricane like this is a test of executive management skills. And President Biden certainly is aware of that and was aware of the reason why he needed to come out and deliver. And that was something that we've seen in Katrina that was one of the biggest modern 21st century storms that now we're seeing back to back again and again and again. But there were so many failures with government agencies from A to Z, either in Alabama or Mississippi or Louisiana, uh, just failure after failure after failure coming from FEMA and other departments of the government that I hope to God we've learned our lesson since then. Like I said, whenever I went to Union City, coming back from Union City, I realized that National Guard was up to something because there was too many cars out there and they was probably having special meetings and they was probably discussing all this. That's their jobs. That's why we have those men and women with boots on the ground to be able to help us whenever something like this occurs. Some of them men and women will be deployed from other states to come and help with this disaster. That's what they've signed up for. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to volunteer towards being a brother's keeper. And thank God that we got men and women like that that are willing to do stuff like that. Thank God that we have Red Cross. Thank God that we have FEMA. Thank God that we have people that has compassionate feelings for other people, even though they don't know them from Adam. May not even like them. When it comes time to do the favorable thing, the good Samaritan thing in the eyes of God, that's what we're required to do, even if it is Nothing more than 15 cents. If a teller looks at you and says, do you mind uh, giving to a good cause with Red Cross and us rounding off the numbers? That's your opportunity. That's your, that's your time right there that you can give to this cause. And I hope to God that other merchants will do the same thing. Not just Walmart, but I hope that all the rest of them will follow suit because this is a problem that needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed properly 
and it needs to be addressed immediately. This is not something that you put on the back burner. Deliver this kind of speech today to demonstrate to the people on the ground in these places, but also to the country at large, that he is on top of it, that his officials are trying to do what everything they can do to get help to the people on the ground there. And you heard him say when he was asked uh, if he thought that Congress would have to pass additional money, and he said that he thought that they would, but he didn't have a figure yet. And those figures are always some something uh, of a difficult thing to come up with. This is actually, you know, the one of the first big hurricanes of this year. So FEMA hasn't necessarily expended all of its money yet, but nonetheless, President Biden is saying there that he thinks that they will need more money uh, to try and remedy the situation. And it was also interesting because he was asked about former President Trump's visit today to Georgia, where he will be uh, touring some of the storm-damaged areas. President Biden said that he was also going to visit some of these areas, but he wanted to wait because of his large entourage. He didn't want it to impact the first responders, to impact the emergency recovery efforts. He said he would go later in the week, potentially as early as Wednesday. President Trump is going today, and he was asked whether that was too early, essentially, whether that was a good idea, and he basically said he didn't want to get into that, really trying to separate this from politics. Of course, Trump has been fairly critical already of how the Biden-Harris administration has been handling the storm five weeks before an election. That is almost inevitable. There is a long history of hurricanes and presidential politics uh, sort of intersecting in the final month before the campaign. And I think that's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons President Biden wants to get out today to really demonstrate that he's on top of things. At the end of the day, there's only so much a president can do. Inevitably, there will be people who don't get the help they need, who don't get the help they need from the federal government. But President Biden right now saying that he's doing everything he can to make sure that happens. It's a very, very humbling event on both perspectives as a victim and as a helper to the victims. It's a very, very humbling situation that, like I said, I sharpened my teeth on pertaining to Katrina and I was proud to do it and I would be willing to do it all over again. Right now, my health won't allow for me to do it at my age and what I'm going through with my operation and etc. But uh, it's a very humbling event. Whenever I worked in the Katrina kitchen right there on the sands of Gulfport, Mississippi and helping them bring in supplies and helping them serve the people and helping do what needed to be done, it, it, it was, I, I don't have words to express in how humbling that that was. To seeing how grateful that that the public was in being able to get just a, a glass of water, a, a, a plate of food, anything. It didn't matter if it was an old rusty Twinkie that was outdated. At that point in time, you're willing to accept and take anything whenever you go through something like this. And that basically put me on a momentum after that I went through that. Of course, I, it had a profound effect in my life. In 2007, 2006, 2007, um, going down to Florida after I went through all that. And um, it has strengthened me and in following other catastrophes and doing other humanitarian work throughout the region, including work in the ice storm up here just north of us over here in Graves County, Kentucky, during the time that they got bombarded by an ice storm. Hopefully, those experiences that I've experienced will help me to prepare for possibly the next horrifying event in my life that hopefully I won't have to experience. But if I do, if I do, hopefully I'll be more prepared for it. And I'll know how to respond in that event. Good luck to all of us. God bless America. God bless our troops. And God bless all of our endeavors towards which way we go from this moment on. Heaven help us all in shalom.